Tonight, the Visual Paranormal team will spend an evening at the Keith House at Graham Park in Horsham, Pennsylvania. The Keith House was built by Sir William Keith in 1721. He was Pennsylvania's colonial governor and he used it as a summer home from his official residence at Shippen House in Philadelphia. In 1739, Dr. Thomas Graham acquired the Keith House and changed its name to Graham Park. Dr. Graham's daughter Elizabeth had a failed engagement with Benjamin Franklin's son William. In 1772, she and her husband, Henry Hugh Ferguson, inherited Graham Park after her father's death. In 1778, Elizabeth lost Graham Park to the American Patriots due to her husband's loyalty to the British Crown, but she was able to get it back with the help of her politically powerful friends. During tonight's investigation of the Keith House, we don't know what we'll find, but we will bring you the evidence. Stephanie from Visual Paranormal Investigations and today we are at the Keith House at Graham Park. I have with me two members that are on the board of the Friends of Graham Park. I have Beth and Maureen with me and they're going to give us a little history about the building. Um, Beth, what can you tell me about the parlor room which is the room that we are in right now? Well this was probably the grand ballroom using that term. The Grahams were notable people and as such they entertained pretty, pretty well-known guests, not the least of which was Benjamin Franklin and his son William. In this room, maybe their spirits still linger during a grand party or a ball. For example, the clock over there is set at a certain time. It does not work. It hasn't worked in years and years and years. But one time there was a film company here and they set the clock at a certain time to begin filming the next morning. When they came back, unlocked the door, the clock was back to its original numbers. Okay, there was another occasion when the volunteers here had come to set up for the uh, Christmas program, and they came in here and decorated everything for, for Christmas with all the decorations. They left to go to eat lunch, locked the front door, so nobody had been in the building, they came back after eating and all the decorations were down on the ground. Evidently, Dr. Graham did not like the way they were decorating. Hi, this is Tina with the Visual Paranormal and I am actually in the parlor of the Keith House at Graham Park and I'm in here doing a solo session I'm really interested in speaking with Elizabeth Graham, but I'll tell you a little bit about the equipment that I have with me. I have an EMF detector, which is right in front of me. It's right here. I can see that it's at zero. I also have another device over here called a REM pod, and if you go near it and you touch the tip of it, it will actually alert me that you're, you're here as well. Okay, so the device in my hand is my voice recorder. It's very, very sensitive, so if you speak at all, I will hopefully hear it on this device. How do you feel about the Graham House now? Do you feel like they're taking good care of the house? Do you feel like you're happy with what's happened here? Is there anybody in this house with me right now that would like to say hello? <laughs> Is there anybody in this house with me right now that would like to say hello? <laughs> Is there anybody besides Elizabeth Graham that would like to speak with me? Anybody that lives here, comes to visit? Dr. Graham, are you willing to talk to us tonight? I'm gonna turn the box on. <laughs> Doctor, 
Here we point out this bug flying behind Tina for a later comparison with a light anomaly that we captured. Somebody messing upstairs with the camera earlier today when we were doing the interviews? All right, this is Nick and Steve. We're out in front of the Keith House in Grand Park, and uh, it's here that they say the spirit of Elizabeth has been seen down by this little stream. And uh, we're gonna do a sweep with the mail meter and try a burst EVP session and see what we come up with. All right, Nick, you wanna take it? Not getting anything as of yet. As far as readings on the millimeter. Oh, wait a second. Let me see if I can come in on it. It just spiked to like a 2.1 and then it went back down. So I have the quarter going. I guess we'll see if we can get any EVPs out here. Well, you know what they say about water? Water is a conductor for spiritual energy. Right, right. And this is flowing water. Yeah, to my left here we have a waterfall uh, that feeds into this this little creek. Is Elizabeth here with us? How about Dr. Graham? Dr. Graham, are you here with us today? Nothing. Staying at 60. During the time we spent outside, Nick and I were unable to capture anything unusual on audio or video. Okay, so we've moved to a different room in the house. Can you tell me which room we are in? Yes, this is the master bed chamber, which would have been Dr. Graham's room until he died. Then his daughter Elizabeth and her husband would have slept in here. Okay, before we get to anything paranormal, can you tell me a little more history about the room? Well, actually, this is the room where Elizabeth was sitting on this windowsill over here. Uh, waiting to tell her father about the fact that she got married because she had gotten married secretly. Mm -hmm. And as she was sitting there watching him walking up the walkway, getting up the nerve to tell him what happened, unfortunately he had a heart attack and actually came was brought into this room and laid in the, in the bed for three days before he passed. And she never did get to tell him. Wow, and so he actually did die in this room? He yes. did, yes. He did. Wow. Can you tell me of any paranormal occurrences that you may have in this room? Yes, one time there was a paranormal investigative group that left an EVP recorder somewhere. I'm not sure where, but they, they went up and they went to get their snacks and took a break. Later on, they heard, and we all heard it, what sounded like crashing dishes, like a thousand things mm. falling and crashing and a gruff man's voice saying, she's coming. It was very chilling. Wow, maybe tonight we can find out who she is. Oh, yeah. that'd be nice, let us know. <laughs> can you show us another room? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. All right guys, we're gonna ask a bunch of questions fairly quick, so if you can try to answer us, just give us one word answer so we can hear you. Is there anybody here with us? Do you feel like you're stuck in this room? Elizabeth, if you're here, how do you feel that you weren't able to tell your father that you secretly got married? Elizabeth, I heard that you liked to write. Can you tell me what it was that you wrote? So we're switching devices. This may be an easier way for you to communicate. Is there anyone that would like to say anything to us? Hello? Did I just 
just hear a child come and say hello? If I did, can you say hello one more time? Can you please repeat that or say yes? It seems like you'd rather communicate with us this way. My name is Stephanie and this is Tina. Hi. Can you come over and touch one of us? I'll try. I heard that. That was clear. Go right ahead. Yeah. That was definitely a man. Who was that? Look, I'm seeing shadows over here, but I can't tell if it's. How many spirits are in the house with us? Are you still trying to touch one of us? I feel like they're messing with the sweep rate because it's going fast and then slowing down. Nick entered the Keith house to begin his solo walkthrough. Armed only with a video camera, we've found in the past that we were able to sometimes capture evidence when one person alone walks through the building. Here, Nick's camera's audio captures this unexpected EVP. Nick attempts to stir up activity by reaching out and rocking the cradle in the children's room. If you watch the right of the screen, you will notice an unexplained light anomaly that appears from the floor and moves towards the camera. In an earlier session, we captured this bug flying by Tina. You could see its flight path. The bug is obviously solid and you can see evidence of its wings. What we capture here is transparent. It materializes out of the floor and then disappears near the camera. Exactly what this anomaly is, we really can't say. Okay, ladies, can you tell me where we are now? Yes, we are in what is called the children's room. And it's called that because back in the mid 1700s, the two children that Elizabeth Graham helped raise, which were her niece and nephew, they would have been in this room for their instructions and their playtime. There's a closet right over there on that wall. And that closet is very unique because it has a lock. The lock is inside and it goes, it's a bolt that goes into the floor. Really? Sometimes the closet will be locked and sometimes it will be open. When it's locked, we cannot get in. But you just wait and it'll open again. Okay, so we are in what is known as the children's room. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with Mary Jo. We are running a spirit box session to see if anyone's around. Are there any children in this room? Did you have friends over with you to play with? Are there adults that are stopping you from speaking with us? I'd really like to know what your name is. My name is Stephanie. What's yours? I thought I heard Chris. I hear you trying to come through. Are you trying to talk to me? Can you say hello? Hello. If you need help, 
Get more <laughs> energy. You can use the equipment. And get it from the equipment we have here. Can you step up to the millimeter? The, the uh, device with the uh, red screen? This one right here. I just touched it. Yeah, if you can touch that and come near it, it'll just show a little bit of a reading, that's all. You'll get to see some pretty lights. Can you tell me anything about the closet and the strange lock? I just want to see if I pick up anything. Nothing. Touch the millimeter or touch me. It's okay. I wouldn't harm you. Alright. What do you think? You want to try anything else or that's it? I'm done. Alright, right now uh, Nick and I are in the summer kitchen. And uh, there's been reports of a lot of activity in here, uh, especially EVPs. Is that the recorder in the middle of the table here? We mean you no disrespect, but we would like to speak to you if you would care to speak to us. My name is Steve. That's Nick. And can you tell us your name, please? Who cooked in this summer kitchen? Can you give me a name, please? Can you tell me what year it is? If you'd like to hear your own voice, give us a sign, maybe knock on something or rap on something, and then try to speak as hard as you can into that, into that red light. Holding a device in my hand that has a stick coming out of the top of it. If you get close to that or touch it, it'll start to light up and make noise. If you could please step forward towards the device that Nick is holding. If there's anyone here with us, can you give us a sign that, you, that you're here? Can you make a noise? Maybe tap on something? Be moving? You feel anything in here? No. Alright, let's leave that running for a little bit. For over an hour and a half, we left the recorder running. We left the summer kitchen and latched the door behind us. At the 45 minute mark, we recorded this unexplained knock. I cannot say for sure if it's paranormal. We're in a room now that is considered a servant's bedroom. Some people say it wasn't, that it was just storage, but other people say it was. But the reason they say the storage is because there's no fireplace. However, no one really gave a lot of thought to servant's comfort back in the day when they built the house. It has a great paranormal story, and I think Maureen can tell us that. <laughs> actually, in this room, we've had a lot of paranormal activity. Uh, a lot of people have come in and actually felt physically sick either headaches or stomach aches or, or whatever, but just very uncomfortable in this room. And in fact, we actually had a medium here one time who um, felt that this was a sick room. She was having issues with her head and, and whatnot. And as we were leaving the room, we stopped and turned around for whatever reason and looked at the bed and we could see an entire figure on the bed. Wow. We saw the indentation of the head on the pillow, saw the arms, the body, the legs, and on the side of the bed, you actually saw two hand prints and a knee print as if they climbed into the bed. Wow. And that was not there when we first Five entered the room. It was not. It was completely flat. Right, we're in the bedroom that was used as a sick room, and we're going to be doing an EVP session, and we have uh, the millimeter, EMF detector, an obelisk, 
Did I miss anything here? A REM pod in the other room. If anyone's in here, can you tell me your name? Were you a patient of Dr. Graham's? If you need energy, there are plenty of devices in front of us for you to take energy from. There's also plenty of us which you can take energy from. Can you let us know if you're here? Uh, just got uh, feeling sick from this room. She's she, feeling sick? Yeah, she left. Also, this is the second time we heard the front door creak. Yeah. Although we did hear the front door open and close, it was later debunked as a couple who thought they could join a tour in progress, not realizing it was our private paranormal investigation. Also during this session, one of the volunteers of the Keith House began to feel sick in this room during this session and was forced to leave the room. ...with the Keith House, leave the room because she felt sick, and this is one of the reports in this room. Mm -hmm. It's at a hundred. It's at a hundred? Yep. In, in forward or reverse sweep? Reverse. Okay. Is there a spirit in this room making someone sick? Is the spirit of the child a boy or a girl? Did it call me? Did you just call me a bitch? Did you just call me a bitch? We're being really respectful. Why are you acting like that? Look, we've tried to be nice. You want to be nasty. You can accommodate that too. Oh, I heard that that time. What was that? I was very clear. Say what it said. Fuckers. Oh. <laughs> I heard fuckers. Throughout our night's investigation of the Keith House, we recorded clear and relevant responses on EVP. That would like to say hello. <laughs> like to say hello. <laughs> we were also able to capture what we believe to be the same voices responding through the spirit box. This evidence, taken in combination with the clearest light anomaly we've ever captured, leads us to believe there is paranormal activity at the Keith House at Graham Park. <laughs>